This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Hey there, buddy! Tap, tap, tap. The sound of the muffled footsteps stopped in front of the door to my room. A moment of silence, as if whomever they belonged to was ascertaining if I was inside. Of all the things I should have been doing, I continued on with my restless slumber. I was very much conscious, but my body hadn't caught up yet. Even with danger bearing down on me from just beyond the door. It was as if I was completely paralyzed, unable to move. Without a doubt, this was sheer terror. Please, just leave. Hey, why isn't my body awake yet? If they came into the room right now, then... I sprung to my feet and threw my covers at my mom, who was opening up the door. Uh-oh. <laughs> they actually found their way in the house, and they probably found the mess we made. I thought it was still 1 or 2 a.m., but the morning sun was already streaming through the gap between the curtains. I felt nothing like morning. Yesterday... I must have fallen asleep right after that. Then I should have gotten a full ten hours of rest. But it didn't feel like that at all. I hate it when that happens! My internal clock was completely screwed up and my sense of balance felt off. I felt feverish enough that it was clear to me that I was still not well. I felt far from well enough. No, I wasn't mentally fit to go. I was still plagued with the terror from yesterday. If I had swallowed that needle, what would have happened? Or what if it had pierced my tongue? There was undoubtedly a mur murderous intent, but I don't think that's all it was. If they really wanted to kill me, then there were other more certain ways to do it. They wouldn't resort to such a dubious method as having me swallow a needle. Meaning, I didn't want to believe it, but going that far was just a threat from Rena and Mion. Aren't you glad you didn't die? But next time we'll use a more assured method. I don't know if that's what they're doing. Like that. Something like sending a letter with a razor inside would have been a joke compared to this. Yeah, I also got roped into going to a weird restaurant with a weird guy that I don't really know. Something about my mom's dubious gaze bothered me. She seemed more concerned about her son missing two days of school rather than him being sick. Welcome to Japan! It was definitely mental fatigue. I wasn't really physically ill. It is true. I'd heard that line many times before. I was given an award in elementary school for having perfect attendance. But it wasn't like I was healthier than everyone. Keiichi's mom is also a real winner. Oh no, not Rena. Mom's tone meant I couldn't argue about it, so I had to give up on skipping a second day. Uh, you know... Sometimes stuff happens, so there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable. I didn't feel particularly guilty for doing it, so I didn't have much of a reaction. Also, Mom didn't question me any further about it. She headed back downstairs after she was certain I was getting up. What Mion said as she left yesterday, I'd hate it if you missed school tomorrow. Came back and dwelled in the back of my head. What did she mean by that? It means she wants you back in school. I didn't even have to really think about it. She was saying, don't be absent. Taking that a bit further, it was the same as her saying that I should just go about living my life as if nothing happened. If I showed any signs of acting unusual, it would probably result in them making their move. If I acted differently, someone like Uisi-san, for example, might end up noticing that something is up. Meaning, if I didn't watch my mouth or did anything differently from the norm, in effect, it would end up communicating something to those who were undesirable. What the heck is going on with your mind, bruh? And it seems that was something the girls didn't intend to forgive. So, if I just went along acting as normal, no harm would come to me. Was that how it was going to be? 
All that misery I experienced up until yesterday would almost creepily just fade away. It was an enticing deal. Just by forgetting everything I'd seen or heard the last few days, I'd be able to keep living on like normal. I swallowed hard. I once again deliberated on the idea that I had just rejected. Mion was probably a good person who had her friends at heart. She was giving me, who had mistakenly broken some rule of theirs, a chance. Was what I did really something so unforgivable? But Mion had given me another chance. She was saying, if I just forgot everything and kept living on like I had been, I'd be forgiven. Don't be late for breakfast! I think Keiichi's mom is definitely shipping him and Rena together. I crammed my textbooks into my bag and hastily made my way downstairs. I was shipping the two together as well, until she started acting creepy. And until he started acting weird as well. I picked up at my, I picked at my somewhat bland breakfast. It seemed that I hadn't, didn't have much time. It was already past when I usually met up with Rena. Given yesterday's events, she'd probably be here in the next five minutes. I needed to be ready to head to school by then. I had to forget everything that had happened the past two days. Forget it all and return to my normal life. For this to be normal, I'll have to be where I normally meet up with Rena. Today, of all days, the rice was dry and hard to get down. Uh-oh. Rena needs medication, not a boyfriend. Boyfriends can be the best medication. No, I'm joking, folks. I'm joking. I, yeah, I agree. Ding dong. I jumped at the sound and dropped my chopsticks. That chime signaled that Rena had arrived. Mom hurried me along. <laughs> my mother's merry smile and my gloomy face were polar opposites. His mom's like, oh my gosh, my son is going to school with a girl and a cute girl too. This is the best. And he's like, do I have to go with this creeper? I don't want to. <laughs> Honestly, I was reluctant to see Rena, who was waiting there on the other side of the door. The Rena on the other side. Was it the Rena I knew? I couldn't keep her waiting. I needed to do things as usual. Ohio. Hi, Rena. An invigorating greeting filled it in from across the doorway. The manner in which Rena was concerned was, without a doubt, the Rena I knew. But that was probably only if I reciprocated. Forget everything from yesterday, pretend as though nothing had happened. How could this be unhealthy? Forget about the gruesome dismemberment. Forget about the mysterious deaths that happened the following years. Forget about the people falling to their death and the terminal illness and the suicide and the fatal beatings and the disappearances. Forget it! Forget all of it! Forget that Rena and Mion were scary. Of course, forget it all. Forget about all of it. Forget about the mochi, too. Forget, 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 forget. Rena once again asked to make sure. Yay! Rena showed me her usual bright smile. I couldn't find any hint of, de hint of deceit in her expression. My nervousness dissipated, giving way to relief. Let's go, Rena. This'll be a good day of school. As we were walking, Rena talked about a lot of different stuff, more so than usual. Uh -huh. You gotta catch okay. up on the day you missed. Uh-huh. Everything Rena talked about was just silly nonsense, so I replied every so often and laughed from time to time. It was a rather laid-back conversation. Yeah, it's true. Some people are very good at it. We passed by one of the neighbors, and they called out to us. Don't want to make Mion angry. After greeting our neighbor with a smile, Rena turned back to me and poked her tongue out. Not expecting that, I couldn't help but crack a smile. Rena stopped and stared at me. Keiichi-kun, 
The rice was hard to eat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. With a grin, she gently poked my cheek. It was a bright, sincere smile. Hey, Keichi Maibara. How can you still doubt Rena after she shows you a smile like that? Because I saw her lizard eyes as well. Maybe I just had a high fever up until now and imagined everything that happened because I was bedridden and delirious. That's kind of what I was thinking, but I don't think that works if you actually find a needle inside the mochi. That's really what's kind of throwing a, 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 throwing a wrench in things. I really hope that was the case. If God would grant me just one wish, there's only one thing that I'd wish for. I would want what had happened in the past two days, more specifically from the night of the Watanagashi up until last night, I wanted all of that to have never happened. I wonder how many times I'd wished for these past few days. Well, I'm sorry to break it to you, but even God is not able to change the past, KG. So, as long as Rena kept on smiling like this, I think it might become a reality. So I wanted Rena to keep on smiling. Keep on smiling. Uh oh! That victim wish, that vain wish of mine, was instantly shattered. My heart began palpitating. The relaxed mood, morning mood, suddenly became frigid. Rena's smile was the same as usual. Her eyes were gentle as usual. Those mochi yesterday. Did you eat them all? Of course, she was asking the question at face value, or she wasn't. In other words, Rena was asking, "Did you get the message?" She was probably trying to convey that. <laughs> I was reluctant to give an answer. Rena stopped walking and stared deeply into my eyes. Don't don't hesitate, Keiji Maibara. Rena was acting the same as always, wasn't she? I needed to respond in my usual way. Naturally, of course. But both my throat and my mouth had gone dry. My lips were stuck together. Hurry and answer, Keiji. Not that much time had passed. I could still keep the conversation going naturally. I had to say something quickly. <laughs> Rena playfully mimicked what I had said when I finally squeaked something out. Rena's reaction was still normal. It seems there wasn't as long of a pause as I had thought. Somehow I finally squeaked out the rest. <laughs> However, my strained efforts neither sullied nor brightened Rena's expression. For a moment I panicked, thinking I had replied incorrectly. But after a few moments, Rena broke into her usual soft smile and giggled with a joyful voice that seemed to echo through the morning air. Being strung along by that laugh, I couldn't help but laugh as well. <laughs> All except the one that had the needle in it. My timid smile froze again. Did you make it without swallowing the sewing needle? Was that what she was really asking? If I had swallowed it, then I wouldn't be here. <laughs> there's, there's still on the wall. Nobody cleaned it up. <laughs> I was scared out of my wits, but that's how I played it. どれが連なが作ったのか当てる宿題はどうなっちゃったのかな。あの宿題って今日までだったっけ？うん、今日までなんだよ。みーちゃん怒るよ。きっと罰ゲームだね。Uh oh, we're still playing with those dumb penalties. We both laughed at each other again. To a casual observer, it was just a typical morning. If I could just let myself believe, then even I'd think it was just the usual morning routine. But I was certain I wasn't mistaken. There was something unimaginable buried beneath the facade of this giggling Rena. I recalled that unexpected, piercing voice that I could hardly believe came from Rena's mouth. The moment that image crossed my mind, I felt a cold sweat trickle down my back. Was it only at that particular time that something evil had possessed Rena? No, that was wrong. That was still Rena. Lisi san told me, didn't he? It was just a prank, bro. Rena had a disorder. The normal people didn't. 
No matter how pleasantly she smiled, that fact would not change. But I couldn't even imagine how she looked as she broke all those glass windows throughout the school. One thing I knew was that it wasn't something spur of the moment. It was some sudden... It was, if it was some sudden outburst of anger, then maybe she'd break a pane or two. But she broke all of the windows all throughout her school. Just imagine going through your own school, breaking the windows with a bat. <laughs> Whoa, dude! This is such a cool, badass CG. Oh my gosh, Reno looks terrified in that one. That's freaking amazing, though. Whoa, dude. Oh man, she looks kind of evil in that one. Good lord. Also, the baseball bat is bent. Also, say no to the upskirt shots, alright, folks? Swing in full force at each pane of glass, one after another. Pay no heed to the flying shards. Your classmates aghast, unable to move from the sudden turn of events. I wonder where she could have found the most windows lined up in a row. Just checking. Okay. Yeah, the CGs did never have more than one art style. Probably the hallway. Well, we've, we've found Rena's move set for Smash Brothers. It was difficult for me to connect that horrifying image of Rena smiling at me right now. I, but I just had to imagine it. Impossible, because it was unimaginable. That naive way of thinking no longer worked. Yes, all of the VODs will most certainly be up here before January 1st. All these are going to be up before Thanksgiving. The unpleasant piercing sound of shattered glass, the crunching noise as Rena treads across broken shards walking up towards me. Okay, Rena. Rena's classmates going pale as they forgot to even breathe. I wondered what they did as Rena came closer, breaking windows along their path. Maybe she did it at night, like how Sachi set the school on fire in Grisea. Did they earnestly try to bring her to her senses by saying something? <laughs> How many pains would she break before you realize, wait, she should not be doing that? <laughs> or did they jump at her trying to stop her savagery? Or did they run to the staff room to call for the teachers? Probably none of those. In the face of the blood-curdling sight of Rena busting window after window, undoubtedly all they could do was silently clear a path for her. Dumbfounded, just clearing the path for Rena to continue. It would be cruel to blame anyone for looking the other way. No, they weren't simply looking the other way. They knew it was the only way they could protect themselves. If they had done something differently from the rest, they may have suddenly found themselves as Rena's new target. What would Rena have done to anyone attracted to her attention? The answer was obvious. She would have undoubtedly acted according to her whims. Meaning they would, I would, be the next window. Rena staring into my eyes, shards of glass crunching and cracking underfoot as she drew closer. I was also drawn into her eyes, paralyzed. Then Rena struck me with the bat over and over again, like I was one of those windows. What the heck's going on? This is, like, the biggest daydream ever. I crouched down on the ground, on the floor, desperately protecting my head. Rena didn't care whether it was my head or my back. Zealously, she hits me again and again. That's the sound of him slamming the refrigerator door shut over and over again at the beginning of the game. What kind of expression was she making as she was doing this over and over again? I peered up to see. <laughs> Her expression was so indifferent, it was completely unnerving. It's because no matter how many times she struck me, I didn't make as pleasant a sound as the other windows. She struck me continuously, over and over again. The sound Rena wanted didn't come out. Our classmates standing around didn't try to stop her. They didn't want to be the next window. Somebody save me. Turning a blind eye unless we're hanging out. But of course, everyone in class scrambled to obtain the highest standardized test scores. They gained nothing from saving for a cram school tryhard like me. What the heck is going on? Eventually, there would be a faint sound, similar to when you crack open a walnut, and then some sort of reddish-black spray would shoot out. What the hell? 
Anyways, it wasn't Rena momentarily lost herself in her anger. After forcing myself to breathe and calming down my heart, I recalled what Uisi-san told me. I think, I think my current theory is demon possession. <laughs> Hear me out. I think that Rena, <laughs> maybe Mion, maybe Keiichi himself are periodically getting possessed by demons. This is my current theory. <laughs> it's the only thing that seems to maybe possibly add, make things add up. Because there's no doubt that uh, was <laughs> that our friends are being weird here now. What does? Following that, Rena was suspended and had regular examinations at the hospital. Then, as Rena was undergoing counseling, she said it over and over. Yeah, this line in particular is like, yeah, this is probably a demon coming into her room. That was only a piece of their conversation, so I still couldn't see the big picture, but it was by no means a happy little conversation. That, then when Rena, what Rena did, was she saying that ghastly incident was the result of her being possessed by Oyashiro-sama? Up until now, I didn't want to believe in Oyashiro-sama's curse. That's why I wanted to say the mysterious deaths every year happened because of some sort of conspiracy. Every time I talked with Uisi-san, I was more certain than the deaths were the work of men and not some of, of some curse. Except, if it was people perpetrating the incidents, my friends were somehow deeply connected. But they're not! Did you take stupid pills after the meeting? After the festival? You, We were all together! If I refused to believe that the curse was real, then I would have to believe those who acted the kindest to me were deeply involved in the incidents. What? Why? How? For what reason? Was Rena? Was everybody? It was much more painful and troublesome than accepting it was just Oyashiro-sama's curse. In the aftermath, Rena had admitted to her doctor that it was because she was possessed by Oyashiro-sama. I felt a strange sense of relief from that. So that's how it was. There wasn't a second side to Rena. She did that because she was possessed by something strange like Oyashiro-sama. It wasn't Rena's fault. Oyashiro-sama was the one to blame. I knew. This was all backwards. Refusing to believe there was a curse, I wanted there to be a human perpetrator. Now that my close friends were the ones under suspicion, I changed my beliefs at my own convenience, saying it was Oyashiro-sama's curse to blame. That is how human nature be. Which was the better choice, accepting that Oyashiro-sama's curse exists, or that Rena and the rest of them were deeply involved in the stream of mysterious deaths? Only involved in the sense that they were related to the victims? Not in the sense that they did it. Ya yeah, but I didn't want to think about it. If I just didn't think about it, I'd be able to continue the same as always. I wanted to believe that. Keiichi, school's over now! But that was no longer possible. I had received their message. It was pathetic of me to try and bend the meaning to my own convenience. Regardless of whether my opponent was a human or a curse, I won't let it kill me. As if I would just bend over and give in. For no good reason at all. <laughs> Sorry, I was just imagining you breaking glasses at your old school. Who told you about that? Uh. Inhaling sharply upon hearing Rena's voice, I came back to my senses. Before I'd realized it, we were already at the entrance. Shaking my head a few times, I exercised all of those terrifying thoughts. No matter how you looked at it, there was no way Rena could have done such terrible things. No, people are kind of evil. It was like I was trying to placate myself. As I slid the door open, a blackboard eraser, loaded with a chalk, dropped down on my head the moment I entered the classroom. The chalk dust went into my eyes, inducing a brief moment of agony. <laughs> oh, brother, not you. Hi, Satoko. 
ケイチモレナモおはようございますです。はい、リカ、I am actually happy to see you。おはよう、サトコちゃんにリカちゃん。Not quite in the mood for it, I didn't really react to Satoko's trap. Satoko braced herself as I passed by, expecting me to attack her. She seemed a bit disappointed as I simply walked by silently. なんなんですの張り合いがありませんわ。ケイチ、まだ本調子じゃないみたいです。Yeah, that would be nice. Suddenly, there was a slap down on my shoulder. It hurt a bit. I got about 10 hours. It was Mion. My mind was full of the stuff about Rena, but Mion was also a party of interest. Remember, Keiichi, that hawkish gaze from yesterday. Ah, o h a y o Your grandma makes pretty legit mochi. And the wall enjoyed it too. What? I'm like this because I ate them. Those words were itching to be boarded out. どれがレナの手作りかってのの回答は、uh -oh. ケイチ君宿題忘れなんだって<笑>ありゃーじゃあ仕方ないね I don't like that really long pause <laughs> <laughs> Great Flashing a lurid smile, Mion returned to her seat. There was nothing from our exchanges that would cause our classmates to suspect anything was amiss. But of course, anyone listening to our conversations up until this morning wouldn't see anything suspicious. That was why it was so frightening. They acted in a way that, regardless of whatever happened to Keiji Maibara, nobody would ever suspect them. That fact had me terrified. Soon the teacher came. Oh, thank goodness! It's best character. Hey girl, how you doing? <laughs> After she asked me how I felt and took attendance, another dull, ordinary day began. When they cry. By the way, still haven't cried yet. I know the when they cry is not referring to me or the characters, it's referring to the cicadas outside, but still. Remember, folks, it's a visual novel. You're going to have water ASMR. This free study period was a convenient time to consider where I stood. I gently closed my eyes and pondered the ridiculous position I was in right now. First of all, what I shouldn't forget. Was how much dangerous of a situation I was in. I had fallen out of favor with them. After interacting with Uisi san multiple times, I could see as I was getting closer to the heart of the matter. The warning yesterday with the mochi was a good indicator of that. No, calling it a warning was just my habit of understated fades. <sighs> it probably had no meaning beyond stunting my progress and buying themselves some time. Until they had a method of completely erasing me. They were just biding their time. Even though they were keeping me under their thumb with frets, it didn't change the fact that I knew too much. Keep them under your thumb, goof! The chilling sensation of my desk made me, <laughs> of my desk made me recall Satoshi h u s u l the boy who was using this seat until last year when he disappeared. Was he also similar to me? Did he learn something he shouldn't have and was erased? Damn! I wouldn't let them get rid of me so easily. Never! But were they really trying to kill me? I've had these contradictory feelings for a while now. Even though I suspected them, I had felt like I had to cover for them. Even having witnessed all of their suspicious behavior, a morning just like this made it, them, it all seem like an elaborate hoax. No, that's just what I want to believe. Doubting my friends? Covering for them? My life was in danger. Or was it? 
Actually, I was debating the wrong point. Given my current situation, those points were something that should have been deliberated on a long time ago. But really, Rena and the rest of them? Were they actually aiming to kill me? The little voice inside me continued to torment me with these unresolvable trains of thought. Are you an idiot, Keiji Maibara? The answer should be obvious. But, but maybe that sewing needle might have just been an accident, right? How could you screw up and drop a sewing needle into a piece of mochi? The benefit of doubt can only go so far. Both Rena and Mion had acted and behaved suspiciously. But maybe it was all some sort of misunderstanding? What kind of misunderstanding? It wasn't just suspicious, it was outright ludicrous, right? Rena just corrected me for lying, and Mion only asked me about what I had for lunch. Rena was standing outside my door, eavesdropping for a solid hour? She, she was probably just waiting for my phone call to end. For a whole hour outside your room? And is it normal to go home afterwards without saying anything? Maybe she just felt guilty that she just eavesdropped and didn't want to talk about it. You heard from uisi san didn't you? About what Rena did at her former school. But at the hospital, she said it was always Shiro-sama's fault that she... You just said that out loud in front of the whole class. I inadvertently boarded those words out loud. Hearing myself say that so directly left me dumbfounded for a few moments. Afterwards, I had to look around to check if anyone else heard it. My little soliloquy cut a little too close to the truth. Even though I could feel the murderous intent from Rena and the others, part of me somewhere was still trying to deny that. This late in the game, such hesitation could be fatal. I knew that. But, I was, well, I was just your average student. A man living his normal, ordinary life. Do you think I could suddenly believe that my friends who I'd been happily laughing together with up until last Sunday now intended to kill me? Right? <laughs> this time I remembered to keep my voice down so only I could hear it. Then why did you use five exclamation points? There was one thing I now understood. I was too soft. I didn't completely understand how dangerous Rena and the rest of them were. No, I wasn't trying to understand. I was too soft for not listening to Easy san when he earnestly was showing me the heart of the matter. I don't trust you, Easy san <laughs> I didn't listen because I was too busy pretending to be dejected. I didn't comprehend it. I was just running away. I didn't comprehend it, so nobody had any notion to try and kill me. I needed to get rid of such naive thoughts. As I made that resolution, I heard the bell signaling the end of class. So soon. The day was already over. I didn't recall eating lunch or doing anything in class. You didn't remember anything that the teacher told you about, and all of it's going to be on the exam, Bruddy. Bruddy. That's... that's... <laughs> tried to say buddy and bruh at the same time. My friends were putting their desks together in preparation for club activities. Not long ago, I probably would have happily joined in that circle. The way Satoko spoke was so typical and familiar, it almost physically hurt. Oh, seeing Rena's expression, which she said what she was really looking forward to today, was hard to take. Hey, Keiichi, maybe uisi san is just some enormous jerk trying to separate me from the others by lying to me. I would believe that more than your friends were trying to kill you. <laughs> Snap! Trying to expunge such weak-minded thinking, I slapped myself in the face. Ke yeah. Was Rena really trying to kill me? I wish somebody would tell me it was a hoax. I didn't care if it actually was one or not, I just wanted someone to say it was. Ugh, yet another weak-willed thought. How did I ever become this naive? Apparently that was how my inner dilemma appeared to Rena. Upon hearing that I wasn't going to participate in the club meeting, Mion pouted unhappily. Uh oh. 
情けないですわね。I wouldn't fall for some dumb taunt. Without even a real retort, I just grabbed my bag and was about to get up. Someone's hand perched itself gently on my head. Keiichi, guai waru so desu. Kawai so, kawai so desu yo. It was Rika chan. She was stretched up as far as she could, doing her best to pat my head with her petite hand. It felt so nice, which made things even harder. That's all I said as I quickly left the classroom. They said something to me as I was leaving, but I couldn't make it out. Rika's the only one I can't really get a, a feel for, like, what she's like normally. I feel like the others are pretty not too hard to figure out, but Rika's a big mystery. I managed to make it all the way to the entrance in that state of mind. Took out my shoes, put them on, and went forward. Forward. Harden that heart, Keiichi Maibara. That's not a good thing to do. They were, for some unfathomable reason, trying to kill me. They were plotting something dubious. Watch you by every move. Yeah, you're going crazy, bro. You are literally going insane. But I couldn't hate them. Because weren't they my friends? Part of me lamented my naivete, while another part lamented the fact that I had lost something important by lamenting over it in the first place. It felt like my personality was being ripped in two along with my body. Get this guy a psychiatric evaluation. He's going insane. If this is what Oyashiro sama's curse was like, then it was just too harsh. Hey, Oyashiro sama, I was wrong for not believing in your curse, but I believe in it now. Completely. Your curse does exist. So seriously, give me a break. I beg you, come on. In the dark of the night, dinner was unusually bland. Well, that's what you get when you mix the goom nut with the koopa leaf. You get a bland meal. It had no flavor or aroma, but it does restore 10 HP and 10 FP, so... The miso soup that normally tantalized my appetite instead tasted like nothing but boiled water. Are we sure that this guy is okay, like, physically and mentally? It seems like he's ill, with something more serious than just a cold. Dad was eating with us that night. It was a rare occurrence in this household. When he got into his work, he ate and slept on his own schedule. My dad never cared about the time. Since my dad was at the dinner table, it either meant that he had just reached a good point to take a break, or he was in a slump. I wasn't able to pick out much of my mom and dad's conversation, but I could tell it wasn't a very pleasant topic. That, of course, made the disgusting food even less appealing. Staring listlessly at the exchange between my parents, my mind wandered off to the same thought process that I'd been going through all day long. Friends close to me. No, they used to be friends. But I could no longer trust them. Right now, I was greatly lacking in allies. That's because you're pushing them all away! People I trusted. People I could depend on when push came to shove. They were something I just didn't have. Having just one ally would have been incredibly reassuring in the currently hopeless situation I was in. I put down my chopsticks and looked over at my parents, who were still talking about work. The first course of action that came to mind was to tell my parents everything. Currently, there wasn't a single person from Hinamizawa I could trust 100%. That meant the only people I could trust were my parents. But, if I told them everything that happened up until now, would they understand? Rena, for example. That neighborly Rena, who was so diligent in looking after me, came to get me every day and sometimes brought over a share of what she made. How could I explain that she wanted to kill me? I don't think she does, bro. No matter how I explained it, it would probably be difficult for anybody to comprehend. My somewhat eccentric dad wouldn't understand, and my high-strung mom would probably drag me off to a psychiatrist in the blink of an eye. You should! You should get an evaluation to see if you're actually well. <laughs> You went to grab snacks, what did you miss? Uh, so we went to school, Keiichi didn't pay attention at all in class, skipped out on the class activities, went straight home, we're having a bland dinner, parents are arguing about the dad's work a little bit, 
Keiichi's trying to explain to his parents that he thinks his friends are trying to kill him, basically. Sadly, that was the amount of trust that existed in our relationship. Even if they did come to understand, what could they possibly do? Unless they could uncover the truth, they wouldn't be able to protect me. No. By informing them of these unnecessary things, I'd be putting my parents in danger as well. Considering that the victims in past incidents were often married couples, I couldn't even joke about it. Yeah, he's, he's super paranoid, basically. For the entire Maibara family to have an accident or just vanish into thin air, it was easily possible in Hinamizawa. What was important here was knowing that something unnecessary put you in danger. The most unsettling question was, how did they know that I knew? As long as they didn't know, my parents might not fall victim. That was one way to think about it, I guess. At least it was like that in my case. After I found out, things started becoming odd. In other words, it meant the following. As long as my parents didn't know anything, nothing would happen to them. Which means that this house would be a safe haven as long as my parents were in. I knew these were just assumptions based on conjecture on top of conjecture. Wanting this house to be a safe haven, that was the pinnacle of my weak-willed method of thinking. I had to concede that it was not completely safe. It was only safer than the outside. I knew that I couldn't rely on my parents. No, I couldn't risk getting my parents involved. Then the only person who could be my ally would be... Weezy san Him and him alone. I, he's the guy who I might trust the least! He was the only person who understood the situation I was in. He didn't care so much about my safety, but he was without a doubt passionate about solving this case. It was a bit frustrating. Weezy san ba was basically the whole reason I was in this mess. Now to get out of it, I had to rely on him. Meaning, it was all going according to his devices. It was just my job to look appetizing while bobbing in the waves as bait. Then, when the fish started gathering around, Uisi-san would pull up the big haul. It was slightly infuriating, but even I thought that was the best course of action. So then, what should I do? Patience was the first rule of fishing. Just keep waiting until the fish actually bites. But I wasn't simply bait. There were lots of ways for me to struggle before being devoured. When they struck, I needed to somehow dodge just enough to tag out to Uisi-san. No question, it was going to be hard. The timing to bring Uisi-san in would be difficult. He was in the city, not Hinamizawa. So if I phoned him in my moment of need, it would take him about 30 minutes to reach me. So I needed to run away for those 30 minutes. For example, if we set up a rendezvous point for dire situations or something. I just have to hide out there until Uisi-san arrived. I was still being chased around in the dark by boogeymen, but now I knew which way to go. I would never have imagined this would be so reassuring. Oh yeah. It would probably be best if I had a concealed weapon for when things got rough. Typically, that would call for a switchblade. A... I don't want someone with Keiichi's mental state having a switchblade. But that wasn't too reassuring for combat. Also, since it was recognized as a weapon by the public, that also wasn't good. Really, when the time comes, a lone weapon like a bat would work in my favor. I remembered that there was a metal bat at school. I could be confident with that when push came to shove. If I pretended I was practicing my swing, then it wouldn't be too suspicious for me to carry it around. I could go to school early tomorrow and secure it. Just possessing a weapon might be enough to deter them. I This is not going to end well. Person who is not all mentally there gets a weapon generally doesn't result in good things happening. Also, one more thing. Insurance. It could be something like a note or a memo. I could write down everything that's happened as a sort of journal. In case I suddenly vanished, the journal would be left behind. With my journal in his possession, Uisi-san should be able to avenge my death. I left my parents engrossed in their conversation about work and went back to my room. His parents still don't know this weird police officer has been talking to their son, by the way. Want to point that out? It's not a slight against the parents, it's a slight against Keiichi for not bringing it up. And Uisi-san for being like, I'm from the bookstore, I want to talk to Keiichi about the Garfield treasuries. I tore out a piece of paper from my notebook and made my way to my desk. Last time I wrote a journal was for summer homework in elementary school. In the off chance that something bad happened, the police could use my diary as a lead. So I should only write down facts. How should I start? I jotted down my thoughts as they came. I, Keiji Maibara, am in fear of my life. It made me laugh nervously. It was a line that showed up often in detective stories. I never even dreamed that I would be in the type of situation where I'd read it myself. I do not know why they are after my life. Rena and the others were suspicious, but I had no proof. 
and that's why I couldn't write anything more. I laughed wryly at myself for writing such a passage draped in mystery. Would the police be able to get the hint from reading this enigmatic passage? I could only pray that they would. What I prayed for the most, though, was that this journal never needed to play its part. Here, I laughed nervously. It was too simple, so I wrote down one more line I just thought of. The only thing I do know is that it has to do with Oyashiro-sama's curse. Was that too much? I probably shouldn't write more than that. If I wrote any more, then it would seem like I was just delusional. You are delusional, buddy! I'd be very shocked if you weren't. <laughs> Maybe his friends are also being kind of crazy and weird, but Keiichi is 100% being crazy and weird himself. In order to appear to the reader that the person who had written this was of sound mind, I chose not to write anything else at this point. I just needed to add more as I learned more about the truth. I folded the piece of paper and thought about a place to hide it. By hiding it somewhere obvious, there was the chance that they would uncover it instead. On the other hand, if it was in too obscure of a location, then there was the risk that nobody would find it at all. In the end, I decided to take the clock off my wall and stick my folded note on the back of it with scotch tape. After that, I put the clock back in its normal position. Yeah. It didn't look like anything was hidden behind it. Now I needed to set it up such that, if anything happens to me, my parents could find it. I looked at it from countless different angles until I was satisfied and made my way downstairs. My parents were still talking about work. It didn't look like it was going to end anytime soon, so I cut in. I'd never started off a conversation like that before, so my parents were both startled. They draw stopped talking and turned towards me. I didn't think their talk was more urgent than mine. In any case, I stated my request. <laughs> Both of my parents' eyes went wide as saucers. <laughs> That's not gonna sound suspicious to your parents. They're gonna think that you're suicidal, but dude. If they did that, then they'd probably find it. <laughs> that is a red flag. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> this is... Hopefully his parents will take him to get help, but somehow I don't think so. My memoir. Both my parents remained wide-eyed, not moving an inch. I couldn't blame them. Mom was finally able to ask me with a questioning gaze. Of course, this was a normal response for when somebody's son suddenly talked about a subject like this. I felt bad about making them worry, but right now I just wanted to think about the clock in my room. With the awkward mood leaving the room in silence, I decided to go back up to my room. Are they not going to do anything based off of that extremely alarming sentence that he just said? Saying only that, I left the living room. What the heck? <laughs> I needed to get to school early tomorrow and secure the bat. I should make today the last day I went to school with Rena. As I climbed the stairs, I heard my mom call my name, but I pretended not to hear her. I, it wasn't something I could talk about with my parents. Bro, you you don't trust anybody! Except the guy you probably shouldn't trust! <laughs> if I talked about it, it would only make things more dangerous. The fight that had begun was mine and mine alone. I couldn't rely on anybody. I wouldn't be killed. Not when I still knew nothing. This guy's going so far off the deep end, bro. Nope, his parents aren't doing anything. They're just like, okay, well, that was weird. No need to look into that anymore. Anyways, b about your work, dear. Not feeling so hot. New tip. Oh, I can't wait. Achievement unlocked. Chasing shadows. We're not feeling so hot today, folks. Guys don't have periods. Mi-mi-chan! 
<laughs> Who just brings that up casually and is like, this is appropriate? <laughs> it is definitely interesting to see that for sure. This is this is unreliable narrator in full force right here. <sighs> わかんない。あの日、ケイちゃんと車で話してたの。実は<笑> リカちゃんのお母さんが受水してたんだよ。今度はケイチくんの前に現れたんだ。じゃあケイチくんもおにかくしになっちゃう。だ。わ、わ、アクチュアリーメイビー。エンプティサイレンスハニーインザエア。エンプティサイレンスハニーインザエア。エンプティサ